Did anyone else see the millennial GB News presenter complaining on Twitter about the lack of house building in the southeast? It's funny how they no longer like Tories when they can't afford to be. I was going to mention that, actually, because I got really pissed off at this tweet. It just shows, right, how so many people in this country just literally have no fucking ideology. And they just basically base their entirety of their politics around team sports, right? This was the original tweet. The original tweet was from Tom Harwood. And it was him saying, South East England is full, whilst looking at loads of empty fields from his Ryanair flight. Because apparently shilling for massive corporations on your private equity funded news channel doesn't even pay enough to fly BA apparently nowadays. The year of our Lord 2023, you shill for the mega rich, right? You shill for the mega rich. They still won't fly you out on British Airways. You have to use Ryanair. What's the world coming to these days? This is correct, right? This place, this area of the country is definitely not full and we definitely could build more houses in this area, right? What he's stating here is, is, an, is a complete fact, right? This is a fact. But everyone in the replies is the, the the amount of people who were in the replies saying who with specifically European Union flag profile pictures and or flags in name, right? Are all getting absolutely mad about this, saying, oh, I can't believe you'd want to build on the British countryside because they don't actually believe in putting homeless people first. Thank you for gifting to Kim Jong il T55, much appreciated, right? They think that it's bad that homeless people exist. They think that it's bad that the Tories treat homeless people badly, but they don't want to deal with any of the solutions because all they care about, because unironically, un the Liberals only actually care about virtue signaling, right? They only actually care about looking right on on Twitter, about looking like they actually care when they really don't. Because it actually comes down to brass tacks, right? There is a solution for homeless people. That's build fucking housing. Let's build housing and put the homeless people in the housing, right? But unfortunately, putting pe putting these people in the housing and building the housing that might affect the the prop the value of their property equity oh dear oh no poor 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 fbp nimbies because they don't again they only vaguely gesture at the problems they want solving and they refuse to deal with any of the solutions these are the exact same exact same class of people who supported New Labour, who then voted for David Cameron, right? And who then also voted for David Cameron in 2015 when he got an increased majority. They, they didn't see their mortgage price go up. They weren't politically engaged enough to care about austerity and all the things that happened because of it. Because they're happy to get pandered to by a bunch of parties who continually focused on ensuring that their pension and their mortgage went up, right? Despite how right on and, you know, liberal they may seem outwardly, when it actually comes down to the brass tax of policy, they do not agree with progressives and we cannot ally with these people on solutions. Let me be real for a moment. I don't agree with Tom Harwood on solutions. I don't agree with him on solutions at all. So I'm not actually advocating for him to be the person who deals with the issue here. For example, first of all, he's tweeting this out in the same manner that someone would tweet out a picture of a blizzard and say, climate change isn't real, folks. I'm looking at a blizzard. Obviously, these two things are different because this is actually a, a reasonable graphic representation of the amount of land that's actually being used for residential homes in this country, which is similar to the amount of land that we use for golf courses. It's it's absolutely wild that we use similar amounts of land in this country for residential housing as we do golf courses, which just shows you the priorities of this country and who this country serves. They serve people who own houses and go golfing. They don't serve people who need cheap housing or who needs to not, you know, be homeless, for example. Obviously, we, I agree with the idea of eminent domain, take the empty houses, put the homeless people in the houses, right? But I also believe that we do need to increase the supply of housing. We need more council housing, right? That's the issue where I diverge with Tom specifically. I'll actually mention it in my tweet. My, my initial point was this objectively good tweet being roasted by the definitely 100% right on centrist types because it comes from bad person Mino like, right? Yeah, because they don't really care about the utility of the policy that he's proposing or whether or not we build houses or not. But they've seen someone who comes from the bad team, namely a Mr. Tom Harwood. They, they, see, they see him from the bad team. Or they automatically disagree with him, despite the fact that he is correct on some of this, right? But the issue is that we shouldn't be allying with people based upon problems. We should be allying with people based on solutions. But they won't even agree what the problems are in the first place. So... I agree. We should let the state buy up all the empty houses and flats capitalists are keeping unoccupied as assets. And I also agree that I like the country I can keep existing. And that's why Tom Harwood is incorrect. He's incorrect because the answer is not what he would propose, 
which is to completely lessen all of the planning regulations and just allow massive corporations and building companies to tear up all of our green areas and turn them into what they would actually turn them into, which is profitable housing rather than utilitarian housing, right? They would take all of this lovely countryside, turn it all into concrete, and build single family individual homes with huge gardens on the back of them to sell to the middle class people who they would make a lot of money off of selling them to because that's what they care about they care about profit they do not care about the actual utility of putting people in the houses once they actually get built in the first place and that's the issue tom believes and there's there's some kind of free market to sol solution to this where what the free market does is massively actually overinflate the supply and then create artificial scarcity out of that supply by turning housing into an asset specifically. And that's the problem. Like, we could build forever, but unless we're building the right housing that's going to be specifically tailored to the fact that what we really need is cheap housing rather than profitable housing, it, there's not going to be a real solution. So the actual solution to this is to let the state build the housing. The state chooses what the housing, where the housing goes. We build entirely livable housing, not affordable housing, because we all know, as far as the, the rules on this particular area are concerned, my mum works in planning, so I know this shit. The actual definition that we have of affordable housing is not affordable housing. And the actual stipulations, so like 30% of new builds have to be affordable housing, quote unquote when it's not really affordable housing, it's just the lowest amount that you could be able to build this for whilst it's still maintaining profitability for the developers or a high level of profit margin for the developers. That's the issue. The two things need to happen. To be able to protect this countryside, where I, I agree with all the people saying we can't just plough over all the fields, turn them all into concrete, right? The very funny meme of saying the UK isn't full if we grind up all of the population into dust and store them in grain silos across an entirely concrete country and that's obviously what would happen if you let the free market in charge of this stuff because it does not care about human need it does not care about human utility it only cares about profit so what you do the state should build in specific areas maximizing utility by ensuring that it's built upon need rather than upon market dynamics and you build upwards you build flats you build high density right what is better a huge amount of urban sprawl of single family homes that aren't affordable don't house lots of people and use up far more land per capita than it would be if you did high density mid-rise buildings like you would like here's the difference here's the massive difference between what i'm talking about here and look at american suburbia this this is not a good this is not a good way of using the space on your land this is this is horrendous this is this is nightmarish this is dystopia fuck this do not do this this is what happens when you let the free market in, be put in charge of this stuff because this is profitable but it's not good for human need and it doesn't help any of the actual issues we have with regards to homelessness and housing affordability yeah it's a nightmare isn't it my rear ends 100 percent medium density is probably best I mean, a mix of medium and high density is what i would say you look at for example this if you use this as some kind of uh, as a differential between the two this is peruba actually if you if i put this over here so you can see it better this is mid-rise it's only four floors or whatever it is this is actually soviet area amusingly obviously it's, it's in czechia so it's soviet era but not actually soviet but loads of green space huge numbers of people are going to be housed in mid-rise housing that isn't a blot again it's not an eyesore or anything like that everything's walkable there's amenities for everybody this kind of stuff it preserves the green spaces it preserves the woodland it preserves the nature that people have access to whilst housing way more people per square mile than you would do if you did fucking horrendous the horrendous suburban dystopia that mr tom harwood believes in it does need trams that's true princess it does indeed need trams but unfortunately because the vast majority of political liberals have zero imagination or zero understanding or zero actual kind of political knowledge or whatever they look at this tweet and just go i can't believe that there are people out here who want to make my property prices go down uh, and who hate the countryside when the proper response isn't just tom harwood is an idiot he is an idiot but it's not the reason people think it is right what you do is you respond and say, what is your proposed solution to this problem? What is your proposed plan for how to use this area to try and create more housing? Because at the end of the day, when you actually look at this stuff, 
most of these are not fields being used to grow crops. So there is plenty of land that we can use in this country. We definitely aren't full. And Tom Harwood is correct in that assertion. The issue is that the solution is right. So there's two lessons, right? There's two lessons from this discussion. First of all, don't just like knee-jerk react to the bad person Mino like saying something and then disagreeing with it on principle that the fact that you disagree with the existence of the person who's saying it. The, and the second part is you cannot agree on problems, you have to agree, agree on solutions. That's the issue. But if I do a sick, a sick enough dunk on Twitter, I might get my tweet featured on BuzzFeed. Well, and that really is the creme de la creme of all uh, of um, recognition, really, isn't it? I, I disagree with the the with the with Singapore imagination scene, but one hundred percent agree with the Netherlands. They're really good at using their space for a country with a you know reasonable population and a very small, a very very small space. Tom Harwood believes so much in the free market; he would absolutely bulldoze the entire country if it meant that it got the economic prosperity that he believes in. Well, unfortunately, the real solution is the solution that we were doing correctly all along, which is to build fucking castle houses. Thousands of hectares of this country is just dedicated to rich people shooting invasive birds. Well, yeah, exactly, right? Everyone talks about this stuff, but yet we never talk about... Everyone, no one ever under, like thinks about the actual utility of any of this, right? Do we need all these golf courses? Do we need all of these shooting ranges? No, no, we need housing for people, right? So much of the, that's that's the problem with having, but essentially with the enclosure of the commons, with having every land being bought and sold as a commodity on the market rather than being used for social utility. And just to think about it, in you know the seventies or whatever it was, and then the sixties, we were building hundreds of thousands of council houses a year. We were clearing slums. We were creating the new generation of homeowners. It was a conservative government that did that too. And nowadays, nothing. And as I've and you know, both parties are to blame for this. I've mentioned on stream before that in the decade that Tony Blair was prime minister, he built as many council houses as as were built when Boris John the short period in which Boris Johnson was prime minister. It's as simple as that, right? And this is why we have a housing crisis. Economic prosperity is when the earth looks like Coruscant from Star Wars. No one worry about the thermodynamics of an of ecumenopolis. I, mean, I think the Coruscant looks cool. And someone actually, to be fair, someone in the replies of the tweet said something similar. I think it was, it was this is the tweet that I was looking at. How Tom wants our green and pleasant countryside to look. And I'm like, yeah, based. Let's fucking go. This looks, this looks, this looks, this looks, looks sick. How futuristic it looks. I mean, obviously, I like countryside and I'm just memeing. But I do think, I, I, I do, I am a bit of an urbanist, you know. I understand the appeal of the countryside, but 100% 255, yeah, the, the restrictive laws on where we can or can't walk. Obviously, it's better here than it is in a lot of other countries like America. But, for example, in Norway, you have, it's literally the law that you can walk wherever you want. But everywhere is a footpath in Norway. And if you think about it, like even if you look at the most built up area in this country, in London specifically, there are loads of green areas to be able to go. And there's plenty of mid rise accommodation within the entirety of central London. Obviously, there needs to be more housing on the outskirts of London built at pretty high density to be able to accommodate the fact that living in London is incredibly expensive. But this is both, it is both, it is kind of a, a confluence of nimbyism, a confluence of lack of deliberate state intervention to build more housing. Uh, and an issue with the overall uh, privatisation of housing, so much so that huge amounts of uh, property and real estate in the London area is being sat empty, being used by Russian oligarchs as an investment portfolio, rather than for its actual overall utility, which is you know people actually being housed inside the houses. Like there are so many areas in the kind of outskirts of London, you know, kind of the zone four or five type areas, which is you three bed semi stuff. Like I remember my friend used, my, I used to see a friend a lot who lived in Mill Hill. And it seemed weird to me that I could get on a train from central London down past, just but only just past Hendon. And get to a point at which you were literally in what I would think of a suburban village in where I'm from, which is kind of uh, from Buckinghamshire. It was really weird to me. I expected London to be built up further out, but it's not. An oligarch bought Dartmoor and won the court case about rights. I'm not surprised. So much future crime was already baked in from terribly planned and terribly built new built housing estates. True, Mushroom Andy. Yeah, absolutely. Like so much of our the issues we have with crime are because of poor city planning, poor welfare policies, right? Those are the two main things we have. And also the third part is relative poverty. We have a lot of issues with crime because we have so many rich people living next to poor people in an atomized society where everything is treated like a competition.
So, of course, people are going to be jealous and go out and commit crime because they're being told by a neoliberal consumer society that unless they have these material possessions, this material wealth to show from their time on this planet, then they're, then they're kind of de facto a failure. Land value tax is based. Happy with land value tax. See, I'm thinking, and I'm a homeowner, right? I'm a homeowner at this point. And people might say, and I, and if people, and if there was someone came around with it saying, we've got the city ordinance to build a bunch of you know new houses in your area, this might affect your property price. I'm like, yeah, fucking base, let's do it, right? I've made more in housing equity in the two years that I've been living in this house, or year and a half I've been living in this house, than I've earned in my actual wages over this period. What the fuck? This is nonsense. I mean, in general, obviously, people in poverty are more likely to commit crime in general because, you know, you get driven to that kind of stuff if you don't have enough money to be able to live, right? But it also comes down, there's also kind of sociocultural factors that exist too. But then again, as we all know, the superstructure of society is built upon on top of the economic base. And that always kind of, that's the, the, re the, the reciprocal nature of how economics shapes society within shapes, shapes economics, which is amusing. I People will say, oh, you're just being a postmodern neo-Marxist, no justice. But, you know, Thatcher believed this too. Thatcher believed that a greedy individualist society would be a better one. And she wanted to create it through economics, right? To quote Thatcher, the Iron Lady herself, you know, uh, the method is economics, but the goal is to change the soul. Right? She wanted to create a society full of grasping simpletons trying to compete with each other and marketize everything. And she believed that would make a better society. That's why we have an internal market in the NHS. On top of it, people get put in jail for the conditions they're in or for being poor. Glasgow's public health approach is one of the better policies. Well, 100%, you're absolutely right. Especially considering that the poorer areas have high uh, have high instances of it as well, of reoffending. And I think public transport is another good, another good point about that as well. And the you know Luxembourg have decommodified public transport. Obviously, they're a tax haven, so they've got the money to do it with. But they just made all public transport free because they're basically a city state at this point anyway. So giving people the ability to be able to travel easily, as Aaron Bastani was pointing out in his recent TED talk, that you know mobility is something that we take for granted to try and you know build economic prosperity. So by decommodifying transport. You give people that economic mobility, which makes for a better and happier society. And I, I, I would buy that 100%. It's just social democratic policy. It's amusing with this, with this Tom Harwood tweet as well. It's amusing with this Tom Harwood tweet that all the people agreeing in the comments are the incredibly culturally right-wing people, but also the economically right-wing liberals. The, the culturally right-wing ones hate the fact that Tom Harwood is saying that immigration is fine. All the economically right-wing ones are all saying that their property price is decreasing is bad. So you've got this weird confluence of liberal FBP types and Reform UK style, you know, ex-BNP racist types all agreeing that Tom Harwood, the, the kind of the arch neoliberal, actually more of a libertarian, I guess, kind of a uh, halfway between the two. Uh, he's managed to piss off every single group. Unironically, the we have we're having the the libertarian agreeing with the leftists uh, and the liberals agreeing with the racists which i think is very funny